Okay, so I have two o'clock, so we'll go ahead on and get started. Welcome everyone to uh, Tech Tuesday. I'm James Lewis, and today we're going to be talking about Let's Jabber, which is a really cool uh, productivity software that we have available to everyone on campus. And our guest presenter is Mr. Reese Bell, who's going to be talking to us and showing us how to get around Jabber, how to use it, and some of the really exciting, cool things that we think uh, that you will love to see and hear. At this time, we're going to turn it over to Mr. Reese Bell and go for it. All right. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. We are um, we're really excited to bring uh, Jabber uh, Jabber presentation to everybody today. What we're looking at is that Jabber was initially um, uh, rolled out to our department. I think around 2017, we were experimenting with it, and uh, eventually we said, "Look, I think this is a great tool. It's going to be something good for the entire university." And so we started experimenting with rolling out to different departments. And um, the way it worked out was by the time we had a uh, decent grasp on everything, we were actually able to roll it out to the university and in, in, in some form or fashion. Uh, not every single part of it was worked out, but we were able to get a big part of, uh, of Jabber working for the university so that the uh, what was going on with everybody having to move around the departments having to move around was not a uh, did not uh, really de debilitate us as as bad as it could have and jabber really played a huge huge role in our university still being able to communicate and collaborate with each other um, so what uh, what university has also done is we've been able to partner up with nc state and uh, we have Mr. Lee Pipkin on the uh, on the call here on the WebEx here. Uh, he is a UC and collaboration engineer from NC State. He's worked very close with us. He has been one of the reasons that we've been able to um, to get everything um, where where it is right now with Jabber. And uh, we really appreciate appreciate his work, everything he's been able to do with us. And he's going to actually go with us uh, through with us on a lot of the features of Jabber. And uh, I want to let him uh, talk a little bit as well as uh, as far as some of the different features. And then him will just play off each other. Lee. Thanks for having me here, uh, Reese and uh, James. I, I appreciate it. Uh, just as uh, Reese said, you know, Jabber is a. Um, it's a, it's one of the great collaboration tools that I've ever used, and uh, I've been using it for a very long time, about ten years now. Um, and I can tell you the the leaps and bounds and feature set that it uh, has been developed over the years is, in my opinion, second to none. Um, so what I'm going to do is, is is share a couple of slides with you that uh, I use uh, in what I call my lunch and learns here at NC State uh, that we have you know typically once or twice a month. Uh, I'll just share a couple slides here. Okay, I think everybody can see that, right? That's good. All right, so let me go back one. There we go. So this is kind of my definition of Cisco Jabber. Uh, it is an all-in-one collaboration tool. You'll be able to see your contacts availability and instantly communicate with, with your contacts using tons of media, uh, whether that be video, uh, video calls, instant, mes instant messaging, uh, voice and voice messaging from your voicemail. You can actually send voice notes through your voicemail system and conferencing. And that conferencing could be conference calling from within the app. Uh, it could be conferencing within a, say, a collaboration meeting room with Cisco WebEx or, or you know, connecting to another Zoom meeting by a SIP address, things like that. Uh, so for me, one of the main features of Cisco Jabber is what's called MRA compliant, which means uh, mobile remote access without the need for a VPN, for a campus VPN. And um, a lot of users have really requested that over the years and, and Cisco's come through with us, come through with it on that. Um, so you can install a client on any application, I'm sorry, on any device without the need of a VPN. And everything is still secure. It, uh, the software that's on the edge of the um, edge of the network on campus uh, allows that uh, uh, 
requirement to be uh, without VPN. So uh, obviously multi-line, uh, this is something that uh, UNCP has not had in the past because of versioning that uh, from the system point of view that you guys were running. And now you can add up to eight lines uh, on Cisco Jabber. So um, if you've got a lot of telephone calls you need to answer, you can answer up to eight lines uh, with Cisco Jabber. Now, I say that eight lines, that is for the Mac and the PC versions. The mobile versions of Cisco Jabber only supports one line. I'm not sure of the roadmap on whether or not Cisco will increase that from one to three or one to eight from the mobile point of view. Um, so we'll we'll be watching out for that from Cisco. Uh, obviously, it has all of the standard IM and chat features built into the client. Uh, group chats are built in there as well. You can have your ad hoc chats by selecting multiple contacts and then right clicking and creating a ad hoc group chat via that method. Uh, video calls, as I mentioned, as long as the other person is uh, also using Cisco Jabber, that point to point video will always be there. And um, you know, it's it's pretty robust, it's pretty clean, it's pretty crisp. Uh, obviously, the uh, the uh, traffic for the uh, from the network point of view is coming directly off of your off of your network, especially if you're doing a call to call, uh, point to point video call on from on campus to another on campus. That traffic is right there and it stays on campus. So uh, the quality is second and none there. Uh, this is a video conferencing endpoint. Uh, you can join. Uh, WebEx rooms, Zoom rooms via SIP-based URL. So again, that just shows you how powerful this small client is. Uh, obviously, voice calls from a soft phone perspective. So what this uh, application allows you to do is turn any laptop or PC or any mobile device using the application into a separate phone. So um, um, for me, I have almost every device under the sun. So I have, you know, six, seven devices, then I have my phone number on all of those devices. So um, from a cell phone perspective, it's really rock solid. Um, URI dialing, I'm going to skip over that. That's kind of a, a, a feature that hasn't really taken off yet. So um, basically, you, you can basically call you via your email address, things like that. We won't talk a little bit about that. Uh, Google and Outlook integration, uh, calendar integration. We at NC State, we're using Google Calendar. I think you guys are using Outlook or Office 365. That calendar integration is also there. Uh, you can set up that integration from within your client. Um, in, in your meetings icon, you'll be able to see that calendar uh, right directly from the client. It also works on mobile clients as well. Uh, voicemail messaging, you will be able to check your voicemail. I call it visual voicemail because you see everything right there in front of you on any device. Um, and from the voicemail, you can also, I, guess, I think I mentioned before, uh, create notes to then send along and forward a voicemail to someone else, right? So um, that's really handy. I use that a lot. Um, send to mobile. This is a, this is a, uh, a feature that not many people know about. And uh, for me, I use it <laughs> quite religiously because if I'm at home and I'm on my mobile device, on my home Wi-Fi and I need to leave home. If I were to walk outside and for a few steps, I lose that Wi-Fi connection. Well, that phone call is going to drop. So I know that I can click my little button here, the three dots on my screen, and there's a send to mobile uh, feature. When I click that, my actual cell phone ringer will start to ring. So it, Cisco Jabber is sending that call to your mobile carrier's network, and the person on the other end of your phone call doesn't know any different. So all you do is a actually answer your cell phone ringer and that call is still connected. And away you go, you get in your car, you drive off. Same thing if you're on campus. If you're on campus and you're on using campus Wi-Fi, same thing still applies. It's a great feature. Um, so keep in mind that that, uh, that feature is there. Uh, let's see, conference calling. Um, this is a great feature, obviously, from, uh, from, the, from the conferencing point of view. Uh, and. Uh, you are limited to the number of conference calls in Reese. Uh, we'll have to look at what that setting is that you guys have there at UNCP. Uh, typically, it's in the four to five telephone call range, um, mainly because Cisco has also some other conferencing pieces or conferencing uh, features that are built into the Cisco systems for the call manager system. And one of those is uh, uh, conference now. And uh, we won't talk about that, but that will take you up to, you know, 15, 16 uh, participants within a conference call. 
Uh, I use this next feature a lot, and, and Reese, will, Reese will probably tell you, uh, desktop share remote control. When you, have, when you have a lot of users using Jabber, and again, I, the point I try to make to everyone is the more people who use Cisco Jabber, the better it is for your organization. Uh, because of the fact that all of the features and the efficiencies and productivity that are built into this client, it just makes it better for everybody. And I can share my desktop with someone who, you know, if I need to share particular codes or I don't really want to email them, I don't want to share them, maybe I'd have a non-disclosure type thing. I can share my desktop directly with another Cisco Jabber user and they can see exactly what I'm seeing and we can talk and collaborate uh, via that method. And then the flip side of that is, Maybe I'm not sure what the other person's talking about on my screen. I could, they can then remote control my screen and show me exactly what they're talking about. So they have that full remote control all from an instant message. So again, another great feature. All right, Lee. So what I want to do, we covered a ton of great features that uh, that Jabra can uh, Jabra has built in. A uh, ton of great things that Jabra can do. Now, what um, what I want to share, and I want to share my screen right quick, and I want to show everyone how easy it is that if you have a, uh, I, with a I have a Windows PC, but it's similar with a Mac, how that they can actually install it on their computer if they, uh, like I said, they have a domain uh, joint computer. So I'll go ahead and share my screen right quick, and let's see. And I will pull up Jabber. Well, I've already got it shared on installed on mine. I'll go ahead and pull up the software center. And after I show you how easy it is to install the Jabber, I'll show you how a couple of few things that Jabber actually can do. Just a uh, simple thing. As soon as you log in, how easy it is to get started. So you actually go to the software center. So if you have one, like so, uh, domain joint computer, you go right here, you talk, type in software, you go to software center, it'll pop up and then it'll bring you right here and you'll have the applications that the university makes available to the uh, domain joint computers. Um, and it'll be under the Cisco Jabber and then you just click and you do an install. So once you install that, it'll be uh, on your on your desktop as well as here under your uh, under your applications list. And when you go in and pull this here up, um, pull driver up here, you'll actually have uh, you won't have a list of people here, but it's very simple to add people to your list. Um, let's see. I'm gonna try to think of who do I not have? Let's see, do I have Liz in my list? So uh, there's Liz. She is actually in a meeting. That's our meeting she's in. And I can just add her to my address book. This is my address book here. I can actually add her to my personal address book because it actually finds her because it has a, it knows everybody that is at camp on campus, all faculty and staff, it knows them. And so I would just click add and I could just add her and she actually is uh, an admin. So I just click her and add her an admin. And there she is. And it shows where she is. Uh, she's in a meeting, shows that she's in a meeting, her status. Um, I'm trying, all right. And it shows this little orange, uh, orange button, orange icon here, orange color here, and that lets us know that she is actually busy. As you can see, it really is is following and has a I, has information on every person, and so much though that as soon as I, m I move over her uh, her icon there, um, with, that has her initials on it, it shows that she's in a meeting. I can actually click here and send her a message to chat with her. Because um, right here, since she has that uh, that orange dot there, it shows that she's busy. That shows also that she is. She does have Jabber and it's showing and Jabber talks back. Everybody has Jabber. They talk back to the server and it shows their status. And so it, since she has uh, has Jabber, then me and her can just chat. And also when you move over here where it's got a phone icon, you can click here and drop down and I can actually call her just from. Jabber just by dial just by clicking there 
and clicking that and it'll actually call her right then. Uh, another good thing is it also shows her information here, her email address and her number. So Jabber is um, not just a way for, for you just to make a phone call to somebody um, on campus or off campus, but it also just gives you information, tells you their status. Like I said, if they're in a meeting, you don't need to call them. And uh, it just offers a ton of different features. Uh, if you look down here at the bottom, uh, it's showing that I have a, uh, it shows a one, which uh, it goes back to what Lee was talking about earlier. We can actually have uh, a, a bunch of lines here with Jabber. We can actually have eight lines. I have the two. This is my second number. So we can actually make multiple, uh, multiple different calls from different numbers on the one device. My device here, my, my laptop is set up so that if somebody calls, it'll go to my laptop here, but also it sends it out to single number reach, which is another feature that we have. That's why it has this. So you can do a ton of things with Jabber. Over here, you can actually check your voicemails. You can look at your calendar. You can see chats and uh, start chats here. And like I said, I can go back to my personal address book. All right, I'm gonna stop sh sharing my screen now. Uh, Lee, I think you said you had another uh, another slide that you wanted to share. Yeah, actually, if you stay on that screen there, uh, go back to your screen there, Reese, and uh, I wanted to mention one other thing. We talk about the productivity and the efficiencies that are built into the client. And if you look down at that icon with a little envelope, you can actually email any of your contacts directly from Cisco Jabber. Now, one of the things I wanted you to sh want to show you too was if you select multiple contacts. So within your contacts there, Reese, select multiple uh, contacts and then just right click. Um, so select three of those and then right click. Right clicking is your friend in Cisco Jabber. Um, with when you right click, you'll see tons of other options, right? So you can actually send an email to all of those contacts directly from here. When you click send email, it launch it should launch your email client and, and, and puts all of those email addresses Aww. inside of that email address. That. So so again, you don't have to type all of those people's addresses, right? So you already have those contacts inside of your Cisco Jabber. And, um, you know, you also can export your contacts out of whatever contact uh, system you use, whether that be Outlook or Gmail or wherever, and import them into Cisco Jabber via vCard format, um, XML format, or uh, CV, uh, uh, CSV format. So, again, tons and tons of features are built into this client. So, um, you know, like I, I know we only have, you know, a few minutes, but, uh, you know, a lot of the features that I, that I have to talk that I talk about in my lunch and learn, um, we spend an hour on that. So, um, again, tons and tons of features. Looks like somebody was excited about that. I'm not sure who that was, but yeah, <laughs> I, I use that feature a lot. All right. I think that was Ms. Lucinda. Ms. Lucinda, did you, did you have a question or you want to? <laughs> it actually was excited for I a mean, second. Hey, Hey, Reese, uh, real quick, um, I don't know if you want to, if you could, could you speak to um, um, the the Jabber on your mobile device? Um, yes. I know that I use it a lot sometimes, and I know that I have had the question of, well, how do I turn it off? Because once people like to separate themselves, once they leave work, right. they don't want their extension ringing their phones anymore right. so could you yeah, speak to yeah, that so, piece yes yeah, so we actually uh, uh added a, a piece to the jabber or, or um a present server to help it not get disconnected uh from the apple users a little while back um so that way it wouldn't actually uh, go to sleep in the background but uh lee and the team from nc state actually were able to uh, uh, add that piece in and Lee, why, what, uh, what is the best way? Tell everybody how, what's the best way for them to turn Jabber off when they're done with it after, after five o'clock, whenever they get ready to go home or whatnot. 
Well, you know, it's it's in the land of always connected, right? So for me, what I tell people is you, you really just have to go in and just do a sign out. Um, and the reason I say that is because of how Apple push notifications and things are working today, because they've changed it along the way over the last few months. And now everything that's in the background working on your mobile device, you're going to get alerted for, right? So in order for you to not get those alerts, not get those phone calls from campus, just go into Jabber and just log yeah. out. That's that's the simplest thing I can tell you. Uh, but then obviously you'll need to know that, hey, I need to log back in on the next morning on my mobile device right. in order to get those calls. All right. So, yes, so we need to sign out. All right. So, uh, Lee, I think you had another slide that you wanted to uh, talk about. Yeah, let's see here. Um, so, again, these features are continued and uh, I, I really can't stress enough, you know, the more people who use Jabber, the better it is for everybody. Um, some of these features are, are kind of self-explanatory. So, like file transfer, you'll be able to, file to transfer files to other users. Now, some of these features you'll notice when you're off from off campus, they may be grayed out. And if they're grayed out, that's for a reason from a security point of view that Cisco has not allowed while you're off campus, even though, um, you know, you're not using VPN and a lot of these features do not require the VPN, but some of these from a Cisco point of view, they have uh, disabled that feature when you're, when you're off campus uh, and we have no control over that. So obviously screen capture uh, presence. I can't talk enough about presence. Reese touched on it a little bit there earlier. Um, whenever you use presence uh, and it's, it's built into it, you don't have to do anything. So as it looks at your calendar, it's smart enough to know when you're in a meeting. It knows when you're on a phone call. It knows when you're out of the office or when you're away. Uh, all of those things, again, you don't have to touch. It's just a set and forget, really. And if I am if I need to talk to Reese, and I do this from time to time, if I need to talk to Reese, I'll look and see if he's available. Well, if he's not available, that saves me that time of picking up the phone and waiting five or six rings to, to just get his voicemail, right? And I really need to speak to him verbally rather than leaving a voicemail. So if I do that a hundred times a day, again, that adds up and it saves me a ton of time, uh, especially over the years. I've know I've found out from my own personal experience that uh, doing that and, and having presence built into this client the way it is, it has saved me a ton of time. And one of the things you also that's built into it is if you right click on a client, you can say, alert me when available. And it will actually, when he comes back, he or she comes back and is uh, available, it actually alerts you because you want to talk to that person and it will stay in your top right hand corner of your window until you acknowledge that uh, notification. And when you do acknowledge it, a window pops up with where you can call or whether you can talk to that person via chat. So again, a lot of efficiencies are built in. Uh, it, d this client does have WebEx integration. So rather than having to go to a website, a WebEx site, to log in. Um, we need to set that up, I think, um, but uh, we have it here at NC State. We have WebEx integration and that works really well. Um, you actually can join directly from the client. So again, saving you time from having to go to another separate login. Uh, Reese touched on this uh, from the search or call window from within Jabber. You type in the person's name, um, it will appear with their name and obviously with their telephone number and you can dial them directly from there. You don't have to add them as a contact if you just want to call them, right? But you can do either of those. Uh, custom contacts, I'll, I call that the pizza guy, right? So any anyone that's outside of your organization, you can add them as a contact as well. So again, email address, telephone number, those types of contact information you can add that are not a part of your organization. You can add directly into the client, uh, multiple telephone addresses, uh, and uh, telephone numbers and things like that. Uh, you can do a broadcast email from this client. It is just that, it is a broadcast email. You right click on all of your contacts and send them a broadcast email from within your team. Hey, meet me at, meet us at the front door. We're going for lunch today in five. Boom, that's it. Uh, really good tool there. Uh, custom HTML tabs on this screen here, you'll notice Cisco Jabber help here and an emergency number notice here. Those are custom HTML tabs that you can add uh, we can add as a system level or you can add as a user. So if you have a favorite, favorite website you, you typically go to every day, you can add that icon right there. And when you click that, this whole entire Jabber window will turn into that web page. So it renders that web page within, within the inside of the Jabber window. It actually uses uh, the Chrome engine or the IE engine uh, to render that web page from the custom tab. 
Uh, we, we talked about alert when available there. We'll touch on far in camera control. Uh, hunt group pickup. Um, if you have hunt groups, um, if you're not familiar with those, basically you can have a bank of telephones and you have one number. And when you call that one number, every one of those bank of telephone numbers will ring simultaneously. Well, they have moved that feature and copied it and put it in Cisco Jabber. So now I can be remote and have the exact same features and functionalities as if I was on campus using a hunt group. So that's what that is. I can log in and I can log out of that particular hunt group directly from the client. Uh, set your location. I won't really talk about that. Uh, I don't like to use that feature, but it's there if you need it. Obviously, spell check. Uh, I use this one a lot too. Um, web browser, click the dial. So if you're in a web browser, you highlight that telephone number. You can right click and call with Jabber. Sometimes you may have to edit that. You can also right click and call with edit. You can put your uh, preceding, I think it's a seven, maybe a seven or a nine at UNCP. Can't really remember. We have so many, <laughs> so many of those. So um, you can use that. Uh, I like this feature. A lot of people like this feature while they're on campus. So desk phone control via CTI. So while I'm sitting at my desk on campus and I have my, tel my uh, telephone right here beside me, I change to what's called desk phone mode within Cisco Jabber. I can directly go into Cisco Jabber. I can search for my contacts and I can click on the dial button. Well, I'm actually dialing from my desk phone at that point. So I'm controlling my desk phone. My desk phone rings. I pick up the handset and there I am talking on the phone with my with the other my other colleague and the same replies to as an incoming call i'm going to see that caller id directly on my screen i'm facing my screen all the time right i don't have to turn and look at my telephone to see who's calling me on caller id i see it directly on my screen through cisco jabber um, and obviously all the other you know custom sounds and alerts and things like that um, you can i think reese showed you this you can actually toggle off single number reach if you use that particular feature so they have that integrated as well and of course emojis animated and static um, and of course multiple device across multiple platforms yes it does work on an iWatch if you want to use Cisco Jabber on an iWatch iPad and iPhone uh, it also has Android Auto and Apple CarPlay integration so I use that as well again saving you time and a lot of efficiencies that are built in there from for your productivity and that's what I have Reese. Hey, Lee and Reese, you do have a cut question that came across in the uh, chat area there from Dr. Blue. She wants to know, can you do a conference call using the mobile Jabber app? Using the mobile Jabber app? Yeah, can you do a conference call using you, 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 the mobile you, Jabber app? You can. It is a little different within the mobile Jabber app. You actually have to be on a phone call and then you actually conference in one after the other. Yeah, from within not, the mobile Jabber app. That's a, um, that's a good one, Dr. Blue. I haven't had that one yet. Yeah, I would, I would, um, you know, and depending on the number of, obviously, depending on the number of people you're going to have in that conference, if it's more than five, I would honestly use uh, the conference now feature. And, you know, Dr. Blue, we can talk a little bit more about that offline, but uh, uh, that is a new feature that's that's within Cisco, um, what's the Cisco call manager that you guys have that feature built in. But um, you can do that from the mobile device, yes. Any other questions from anyone out there? Please feel free to unmute your microphone and join in on the discussion. We have a few minutes left. I think one time a while ago, um, right right before we we got out for the pandemic um i think there was a question raised about um jabber on the cell phones um about it listening in or tracking people so is that true like will will jabber just automatically you know pick up listen in no we don't, we don't no we don't have anything enabled uh to record calls right now on Jabber, so we don't even we don't have that those conversations recorded. So, so one thing to to also you know this is from a technical point of view to remember is um, the system the Cisco system treats every device as a separate device within the system. So I can have ten devices, but I can have my own personal telephone number on all ten of those devices. The system treats those as ten separate devices. So um, unless that telephone you know call is being recorded, like Reese said 
No, none of that is actually happening. Right. That's what I said too. They didn't believe and, and, and to touch, I, I know we didn't really touch as much on um, uh, getting Jabber on your devices, but it's freely available on the App Store and uh, Google Play. Um, like I said, it's available on about every device that you can put that, that you can use. So it's widely available. That's awesome. Any more questions? Yes, I used to um, work at another company that had short tail. And this is similar. How can I, um, I, I started on the webcam later. How can I go there and um, contact a coworker without using my regular phone? How can I do it through the this jabber? Can I do that? So make a call out to no, like uh, I want to talk to someone. Could I send them a message through Jabber? Oh, okay. So I think what she's talking, Lee, is about the is that the Federation thing that we were talking of earlier, where it's um where it's uh globally known. Uh, so someone that's outside of your current organization who yeah. is also yeah. using Cisco Jabber. Right. No, I'm talking about like just employees in your in your clinic. Could I go there and just send them a message if I wanted to talk? Send them a message about anything. Could I do that? You understand what I'm trying to say? Marie, she joined late, so she's just trying to understand how to use it, like messaging and actually calling through Jabber. Right, mate. Got you. So let me so go ahead and pull mine up. No, you're fine. I'm going to pull mine up. Uh, it's not a problem at all. And so if I want to, like, say, I'm going to go to my, like, so I've got everybody, people grouped in, like, admin. Uh, and I, I just want to send Liz a, um, uh, a chat. Right. So I'll just, right. I'll pull her up and I'll just say hello. And as soon as I hit enter, it's already in her, uh, over, at her, over there at her computer. And okay. she sees, and she sees it come over and she can just see, she's already responded back and said hi. Okay. And if I just want to call her, yeah, and if I just want to call her, I'll go here and mouse over the green icon here with the phone, and I can just actually just call her right there. Wonderful. Thank yep. you. And if and see where it's got the uh, magnifying glass here, I can actually type in her name if I don't have her in my list, and it'll show that green icon again with the phone. It'll actually show her number. It says call 4155. And I can just click there and it'll actually call her as well. Well, thank you. That's awesome. I love it. <laughs> Reese, while you're there, go ahead and click those three icons. Uh, share your screen again there, Reese, if you could. Um, while we have everybody there. Um, this kind of gets overlooked sometimes. Those three, uh, three little dots to the right there just go inside of a, to Liz's chat session you just had. The three icons in the top right, if you click those three icons, you'll have more options there and you'll notice, you know, the schedule meeting, right? You'll notice to share your desktop to the next one. And then the next one is your roster or your chat roster. So if you click there, that's going to open the roster. It's going to split the window a little bit. So click there. You can actually add more people from here into the conversation, right? So again, kind of like an ad hoc uh, chat here. Again, exactly right. So you can start a group chat directly from an existing uh, chat window. Exactly. Yeah. And so when I would send the message, everyone would get it. Exactly. And yeah. while you while we're still here, and maybe uh, this will help uh, from a conference call point of view, go back to your contacts there and select, say, four people. Any four will do. And then right click and click on conference call. Go ahead, click there. Okay. So the method that Cisco uses is you actually call each individual user. And then if they're available, obviously, right, then you, that icon, that green icon with the telephone will actually change to a little green door. And you click the green door and they're added to the conference. And you have to do that for every particular one. Because sometimes, you know, people aren't people, they may not be there to answer the phone and they may be doing something else, even though they're showing they're available. So that's the way Cisco does that there. Um, so if you hit X there, 
Yeah, yeah. And then go back. Yeah, go back to your uh, chat. Yeah, contacts, and click on the uh, admin at the very top and right click on that. So at the very top, these are his groups. So these are his admin groups. You also can do this from the what they call the group banner. If you right click on your group, so let's say you have all of your department in inside of this one group, you can send an email to the entire department directly from by just right-clicking on admin and clicking on send mail. It will add every one of their email addresses into that email and you can send that email that way. Now, you may use groups and things like that from, from an email point of view, but this is another way within Cisco Jabber that from a, group peop, from a group point of view, you can start a conference call. You can send that broadcast message to your entire group and uh, there's your alert when available, right? So you can do those alert when available on the individual level as well. All right. Reese and um, and Lee, what is really the difference between the uh, outside of the the phone piece? What uh, this looks a lot like um, WebEx Teams or now WebEx. What is what will the user gain using uh, Jabber versus or versus WebEx the Web new WebEx or WebEx Teams app? Is there a whole lot of difference, or is that a total different product? Or do you see down the line that these are going to be merged into one, or, or, or should we have both devices? Should we have both apps running on our machine? Right. You know, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a good question. I mean, uh, so um, it with Jabber now. What I've seen with Jabber, Jabber is more solid as a phone. Uh, it's more solid as a. Um, a conferencing, a conferencing collaboration tool. Now, with WebEx Teams, it's very solid as a collaboration and conferencing tool as well. Jabber has the edge when you're talking about uh, different things, such as we're we're actually getting ready to start using Jabber more as a uh, a tool with our call centers. Not sure how that would be able to work out with WebEx Teams, but with our call centers, we're looking at using Jab, uh, Cisco Jabber. Uh, uh, across the board, from what I understand, what we're trying to move towards. Um, now, there's different implementations of that, but like I said, uh, one of them does a little, a little bit better than what the other one does as, as far as collaboration, and then uh, as called, as far as calling. And Lee, I know Lee. Go ahead, Lee, and, and I know you're you're itching. You're itching. I can feel it. Go ahead. <laughs> well, I, I was going to say, I was going to say one of the one of the major differences right now. Uh, as, as, it, as it pertains to Jabber and WebEx Teams. Now, they've rebranded it to just WebEx. I, I know that's confusing to everybody, but um, from the point of view of UNCP and for NC State, for that matter, and other universities that we support, Cisco Jabber is directly is tied directly into your infrastructure on your call manager, which means your telephone number on campus is tied directly to that client. So wherever you have that client and wherever you're using that client, your telephone number for campus is being used there. So using your, what we call your on-premise uh, resources. With Cisco, with Cisco WebEx slash WebEx Teams, when you make that call, you're actually making what's called a SIP call. There's no telephone number tied to you right now. So that's the major difference. Now, right. in the future, will UNCP tie that with local on-prem resources? Possibly. I know, yeah. you know, we're in talks with Kevin and, and some things like that. Um, so that may be the case moving forward. And I, I will tell you what Cisco, Cisco really, from the on-premise point of view, meaning on campus, uh, if you have your resources on campus, they like you to use Cisco Jabber. You can use either one. And if you have the implementation for your campus resources to be in the cloud, they like for you to use and the integration is way better from right from a Cisco WebEx teams point of view. So, you know, segregating the two, you know, it, it's. I use them both, obviously, but I use Jabber more because I want that. I want my telephone number to show who I am when I call someone and I can make those what we call PSTN calls. I can call someone's cell phone from Cisco Jabber. You can't do that with WebEx Teams right now with your implementation that you currently have. So that's a major difference there. Just think of it, Cisco Jabber is a telephone, is a telephone, is a telephone, right? So I can make any call to anybody on any, any, on any phone, even a pay phone. If it's got a telephone number, I can call it from Cisco Jabber. That's some awesome stuff, man. Any more questions, insight?
All right. Well, we want to thank Lee and Reese for such a amazing, amazing um, Tech Tuesday today. I had no idea it was going to be this well. And uh, I knew some of the features of Jabber, but I didn't know a lot of the things that you guys um, expressed and went over. So we appreciate it so much, so much, so much. So we got to do this again because I know there's other parts that we didn't even touch. Maybe right. we could go part two and talk about some of the advanced features for some of those high level users. You know, because uh, for me, Jabber was a big piece during the whole COVID situation, being able to have that interaction and then be able to send a quick message or a video chat right from that one app was uh, is amazing, is an amazing tool. So, I think still having our phones was the big piece. Yes. Whenever yeah. we, during the pandemic, still being able to be at home and still have our office phone number mm -hmm. was, was the big piece. Yeah. yeah. So. And, and maybe on that second part, we'll talk about that little icon you probably didn't see, but it says down in the bottom left-hand corner, it says video device. So I know UNCP has a lot of those Cisco WebEx room kits and things like that. You'll be able to connect to, to that room kit wirelessly from any device that has Cisco Jabber on it. Yeah, that would be a good one. So let's make let's talk about that, plan that one uh, down the road, and um, let's just grow this thing and make it as great as it can be. So if if you know someone that couldn't attend the session today, let them know that this is going to be on the Do It website page as well, and then we're going to later on in the a few months ago we'll stream this live um on facebook and youtube we'll premiere it there as well um but if they want to see it quite a, a right away it should be up there in the next few days and you can review it and uh, send us emails if you have any questions all right thanks again everybody especially reese and lee and all of you for taking the time to come out and hang with us on another tech tuesday and be sure to stay a look on your email because we're going to be sending out further information about new sessions that's coming up there's a lot of great things happening in the technology world sometimes it's too much <laughs> but it is what it is, right? We're going to make it. <laughs> We're going to make it. So thanks again for joining us. Y'all have a wonderful, wonderful day. Thanks for having us. Bye. Thank you. Bye.